Hey YouTube, it's me, Ashley. Um, I wanted to just come on here and talk about um, my jaw surgery and the severe class 3 underbite malocclusion that I had. Um, so let me start off by saying that I started my entire orthodontic process when I was actually 12 years old and I was told that I had a class 3 underbite meaning that, well I'm going to post pictures but meaning that my bottom jaw came out so came out came out farther than my top jaw so my teeth were like this and my jaw and so um it was really something that I struggled with for a really long time um, in terms of self-esteem and confidence and not only was it something that bothered me emotionally but it was something that really was difficult for me physically I mean eating with an open bite with an underbite was one of the most painful annoying frustrating things a person could ever think of. I mean to the point where you want to bite into a sandwich and as you're biting into the sandwich it is literally falling apart as you're biting into it because most people have what you would call a normal bite where the top teeth come over the bottom teeth like so and when you bite it your top teeth your top jaw is supposed to cut through the sandwich. So when your bottom jaw is like this and you're biting into a sandwich, the sandwich or the burger or sub that you're eating begins to tear apart. And so I had such a hard time eating in public with my underbite. Yeah. I was so embarrassed and um, it was just a really, you know, difficult thing. I was bullied so much for having an underbite. I mean, people said mean, horrible things. And I'm talking about some really painful words were said. Um, for example, um, I know a lot of you are familiar with Nickelodeon and the cartoon Timmy Turner and um, the superhero Crimson Chin. Well, apparently that was my nickname all throughout school, elementary, middle school and high school I was known as Ashley with the big chin or Ashley with the big jaw and you know people would literally look at me and go ooh I make the face and let's just say um, high school school in general was extremely difficult for me and not academically I mean I am what one would call an overachiever I'm my biggest critic critic and School was just, it was to the point where I became so depressed and just so broken by all of the bullying and harassment that I went through that I was literally like, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go to school. I did not get a little emotional talking about it, but um, I did not want to be there. And by the time I did get there and I had all this makeup work, everybody was like, why are you even here and this this that and people would make faces at me and I mean kids are mean we know that but when it comes to the point where they are getting in the way of your education and you know a lot of people will say you know tell tell an adult tell a teacher tell the principal tell the guidance counselor well when I did tell the guidance counselors and the principals and whoever that I thought would have been an adult that would have, you know, helped the situation. It seemed like they didn't want to get involved. And a lot of the kids that did bully me were, their parents were members of the PTO and their parents were big donators to the school. So I was just left there being a victim of bullying and no one did anything about it. And so I actually had to switch schools multiple times because of my underbite and because, um, and because of how many people harassed me, and I mean to the point where people threw paint on my chair, people put pizza, I sat on pizza, people, I mean, it was to the point where I would come home in tears. 
I literally would go into school, I would ask to go to the bathroom, and sit there in the stall, and bawl my eyes out, because I just did not want to face them. I did not want to face um, those mean girls, those mean boys, I call them the evil names and just harm saying harmful things to me but anyway that's a whole nother video but um back to the underbite story situation so when I was 12 years old they they let me know that I can start my orthodontic process and um they let me know the possibility that I may have to do surgery but there's they were still going to attempt to do um the orthodontic work without surgery so I had what one would call an expander and it went at the roof of my mouth, and I had a key that I would turn every day. So I turned the key every day, and it actually helped with a crossbite that I had, but I still had this underbite. Like, it was so, I mean, my side profile was extreme. Like, I'm going to show you the x-rays and everything, and you guys are going to see the exact measurements of how severe and rare my underbite case was. And so, you know, 12 years old, I didn't know what to do, I was scared. And mom had no idea, you know, what to do. I felt, you know, we were so helpless. And so, went to the orthodontist, and they started me on braces. And I wore braces for two and a half years. And after the two and a half years, they let me know, yes, you will have to do a underbite surgery. And here are the steps you need to take you have to remove your four wisdom teeth. Okay, so by this time, with insurance and everything and finding a proper surgeon that can remove the four wisdom teeth in my area, it took us a while. I was 15 years old when I had all four wisdom teeth removed. Mind you, I was one of those lucky people who had four healthy wisdom teeth. I mean, that's rare. Like, they were perfectly placed, but of course, I had that underbite, so... They needed room to get in there and do the surgery. So I had all four wisdom teeth removed for the surgery. Okay, they told me that I had to wait till I was I stopped growing. So I came in every year, they took my height, everything, and they realized that fifteen was the right age to, you know, remove all the four wisdom teeth. And then I went back again and they said, Okay, um your jaw is still growing, still growing, still growing, and they said Check back with us when you're 18 years old. Check back with us when you are, um, you know, 18 and fully grown and, you know, whatever the case may be. So I did that, and um, didn't get the approval for the surgery. Devastated. I mean, I was so devastated. I can't even bring the words to say how hurt I was. And so this process has been going on basically my entire life, you know, wondering if I'll ever get this dream surgery, wondering if God will ever allow this surgery to happen. And I mean, I am so thankful because every night before I went to my bed, I prayed every night and I said, God, please, please give me the ability to smile like everyone else. Give me the ability to be able to eat comfortably and not suffer from TMJ and, and get migraines and headaches and strain on my face and tension headaches and feeling the pain in my face. And a lot of the people that do know me, they know I'm a trooper. And they know that a lot of people didn't even know I was going through what I was going through because I fought through. And I mean, my mom taught me to be strong, be independent. And to never let them see you cry. And that's exactly what I did. I stayed strong. I smiled. I even spoke at my high school graduation. I had, my mom taught me to be confident in who I am. And, you know, be patient because God is working on that surgery. And so that is exactly what I did. And I prayed to him every night. And so when I was 18, I was devastated. I mean devastated that the surgery wasn't approved and we sent in letters to the insurance company and vice versa and I was just really hurt and I was beginning to think that I was beginning to get discouraged and think that, you know what, this surgery isn't going to happen. It's not going to happen. And my mom said, Ash, Ash, don't give up. Just keep on making calls. Keep on looking. Keep on looking because you are gonna, you are gonna find a surgeon who can do this. God is gonna make this possible. And so I believed in my mom, and I believed in God, and I knew that He could answer anything. And He's, 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 
<sighs> let's just say he has answered every single one of my prayers. And I knew that. And in my heart, I knew that if I just had faith in him, that he would answer it. And so, um, that's exactly what I did. I went off to college, um, and I still had the underbite, and, um, I was really still insecure about it, and I tried not to let it bother me. I tried to get it out of my mind and, and still be able to get out there and do things and not regret the fact that because I had an underbite, not to do some of the things that I wanted to do. I mean, in high school, I was able to do runway fashion shows and stuff like that. And my mom just kept on pushing me. Don't let that underbite stop you, girl. Do you? Don't let it stop you. Don't let it hold it back. Hold. You. Don't let your underbite hold you back from being who you want to be. And that's exactly what I did. And I, I, I would never regret it for the world. Not at all. Because I look back at that and I say, Wow, I was such a strong person to have, um, gone through that and done some of those things that I would have regretted not doing. And so, yeah, back to the story again. Um, so I went up to college, and I actually was able to meet someone. I met my boyfriend. And he is such a sweetheart, and he loved me for, for me. And I told him about the surgery and how bad I wanted it and how long I waited for it and how much, how important it is to me. And he said, Ash, if you don't get that surgery, I'm still going to love you. If you get the surgery, I'm still going to love you. No matter what, I love you for who you are, and that's all that matters. And that, that really meant the world to me, I'm not going to lie. And so, first year of college went by, and now I'm starting the second year of college. So in between um, that summer, now this is amazing, that summer I contacted an orthodontist, um, Spark Orthodontics in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I contacted them, and the receptionist, the lady on the phone, the receptionist, Liz, gave me a lot of hope. And I, I mean, she let me know that there's other people who've done this surgery. There's other people, they've had patients that they referred because the surgery is a type of surgery that you need braces. You need surgical braces in order to have this surgery done. You need to have braces in throughout the entire process for the wires, everything. So you need sur you need braces. So the first thing first, you need an orthodontist. So I was looking for an orthodontist and I was able to I stumbled upon Spark Orthodontics and they were so excited and they were so and so they said, "All right, let's get you started." I I went in during the summer for a consultation, I was like, this is unreal. Is this really happening? And I didn't want to say anything. I just wanted to just kind of let see how it played out. And, um, yeah, um, they took x-rays and everything. And I remember that day like it was um, yesterday. And I took the x-rays, and I still had that underbite. And <sighs> taking pictures was one of the hardest things, especially profile pictures. Um, you know... In the past, I never turned sideways for any photos. I always did this, and I always had an open smile so that you couldn't tell that the alignment was off. And so, yeah, so, you know, standing there taking the pictures was really um, a painful experience for me, and that was one of the last times I, t that was one of the last times I took a profile shot with the underbite. And, um, that they approved the uh, braces. That's the first step. And so I was in school, you know, fast forward, I was in school throughout the fall semester. I was in the library and mom calls. And mom goes, Ash, they approved the surgery. And I start, I like flipped out in the library. And I mean, I'm on the third floor. And if you guys know, third floor of a library, study zone, like quiet. And I mean, I freaked out. I was like, like, I didn't scream, but, like, I was, like, talking at regular level, like, how I'm talking to you guys right now. And I was so emotional, and I was so happy, and I just couldn't believe that they really approved the surgery. And not not only that, but they gave me a date to look for. And when I tell you that, like, the heavens opened up. My emotions, I can't express to you the joy. <sighs> Getting emotional just talking about it. Um, I can't express to you the joy that I had when they told me that um, they approved the surgery. 
can't even tell you how emotional. Oh my gosh, I'm crying. I didn't want to cry on camera. But um, when they approved the surgery, I was, oh man, so happy. So happy. I, I give thanks every day for the surgery. And I'm going to give another follow-up video talking about um, the details and how everything went and the preparation prior to the surgery and everything. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys a background on my story and how, you know, the underbite has definitely affected my life. Um, I mean, living with an underbite, not, I mean, people will tell you, people with an underbite will tell you what it feels like when you want to smile like, when you want to show your joy to the world, the first thing you want to do is smile. You want to show the world how happy you are. And when you can't confidently smile, your whole world, like, it just becomes so... You feel like a piece of you is missing. You know? And by no means whatsoever... Excuse me, I'm sorry. I was crying. By no means whatsoever was this surgery some I don't even know what I want to say but basically um, I have been a happy happy person ever since the surgery I mean my confidence has gone up and not only has it been a confidence booster but a humbling process as well it allowed me to see that all things are possible through God. All things are possible. And if you put your faith in Him, He will He will guide you. He will answer your prayers. Put your faith in Him. And that's exactly what I did. And let me tell you, I started the process when I was 12 years old. I am 21 years old. I had the surgery January 8th, of 2014 and I counted down those days I, I couldn't wait and I mean the whole process you know a lot of people say it's painful it is I'm not gonna lie to you but nothing beats the joy of knowing that I'm not gonna have this facial deformity anymore nothing beats the joy in knowing that what I've waited for my whole life my whole life has finally came true. So um, stay tuned for the next video. I'm just going to follow up with, you know, everything and all the details with what happened with the surgery. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. Thank you for listening. Bye, guys. Ashley here. Love ya.